Do you know how late it is? It is 12 at night in the morning, 12 a.m. <laughs> and the reason that it's 12 at night in the morning is because this is the only time I can record. And you might be wondering, Elise, why are you recording at 12 in the morning at night? And it's because I'm in Mexico where the dogs are always barking, the tamalero comes in up and down the street every five seconds, endless construction. There are so many reasons why I can't film during the day, but I'm here now, okay? And this is how I'm showing how much I care about you, filming at 12 o'clock in the morning at night. Just like the wise Hannah Montana once said, everybody makes mistakes, okay? It is human, it's natural to err as human, but we don't have to be so human all the time, okay? That's what I think. Hi, my name is Elise De Vega. I've studied over 10 languages and today I want to shield you from as much suffering as I possibly can. Today I'm telling you all the biggest mistakes I've made on my language learning journey so that you don't have to replicate them, okay? I've been through it so that you don't have to. I've struggled as a beginner, I have hit the intermediate plateau in a handful of languages and I'm just, I'm ready, okay? I'm ready to pass that knowledge on to you. Any questions before we start? No? Okay, that's what I thought. Shall we start with the biggest, goofiest mistake of all time? And it's a very goofy mistake because the mistake itself is being afraid to make mistakes. It's kind of a paradox, isn't it? Don't think about it too hard. Being too much of a perfectionist actually hinders your growth because mistakes are necessary to growth. That's something that we've learned ever since we all learned how to ride bikes, right? You have to fall down before you can ride it. And avoiding making mistakes can manifest in a lot of different ways. It could be, you know, avoiding using a certain tense because you don't remember the exact conjugation. It could be not using slang because you think it sounds silly on you, or it could even be, you know, phrasing things in a more simpler way, only using words that you know you know. In my experience, I think that I always remember things better when I make a mistake on it and then somebody corrects me, but it's not just like a one correction, you know, and then I get it right type of deal. It could even take lots of correcting. There there's one word in German, one phrase in German that I cannot ever seem to remember and it's something so simple. I'm married. Ich bin verheiratet. I always mistakenly say geheiratet and even at my level at like a B2, it's a mistake that I still make all the time and I have come to peace with it. So throw yourself out there. Start sentences that you can't finish on purpose. Try new things. Let the person that you're talking to meet you in the middle. You might be pleasantly surprised. I mean, if it's just an informal conversation, like what is the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? Why don't we ask that question? Next, I wanna talk about something that I think I've been taking like increasingly more seriously in the last couple months, and that is goal setting. The biggest mistake you can make with goal setting is having vague goals. But before I give you the whole spiel, I kind of laid out my whole philosophy on goal setting in this video that I did in honor of the new year. So if you wanna see some detailed planning goal setting, go check her out. But with regards to vague goal setting, these are some examples of what I call incomplete goals. I wanna learn more Spanish this year. I wanna reach B2. I know we've all heard and said this before, but I want to reach B2, that is not a complete goal. I wanna improve my speaking. These are all too vague, okay? We can't, we, mm. the group think has to stop, okay? You want to learn more Spanish, but what specifically, what Spanish do you want to learn? You want to pass B2, but what are you going to do to prep for that exam? You want to improve your speaking, but what's currently wrong with your speaking that you need to improve? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. There is an approach that I've thought up, you know, regarding goal setting, and it's called the want, need, and will, and it's also completely original, though I should probably write a book at this point, right? So to build a complete goal in your target language, first you have to consider what you want. So envision yourself doing something in your target language. This could be something as small as going to a cafe and ordering food. It could be as big as going to the doctor, you know, having a doctor's appointment in Spanish, which I'm actually gonna do on Thursday. Everybody pray for me. I haven't been to the doctor in like years. TMI, probably TMI. Who cares? I don't have healthcare, I'm American. So whatever you want to achieve in your target language, just envision it, okay? This could even be, you know, those incomplete goals that I mentioned. The want could be the B2. The want could be improved speaking, but those themselves are just a step in this process. Those are not like the full goals. So let's say that your want is ordering at a restaurant, or let's say that your want is going to a doctor's appointment. You have your wants. Next up, what are your needs? What specific things are you lacking that you need to improve or you need to acquire to satisfy the want? So for the person wanting to order at a restaurant, that could very well be, you know, the grammar that you need to make a request. Or for the person going to the doctor, that could very well be medical vocabulary or like, you know, bodily vocabulary. And lastly, what is your will? What are the concrete steps that you're going to take 
to get there. And this is where I start to think more of like quantification because this step, you know, the will, kind of bridges into like planning a study routine. So for the person wanting to go order at a restaurant, they could be studying those grammar points, you know, twice a week, 30 minutes at a time, and then practicing with a tutor. You know, for the person wanting to go to a doctor's appointment, this could just be learning five new bodily words or medical words each day. So by following this kind of protocol, you not only have a solid goal, but you also can imagine more of the steps and the actual work that it's gonna take to get there. And that's the reason that we often don't end up meeting our goals is because we kind of just speak it out into the universe, you know, I want to do this or I'm going to do this. And we don't think, you know, through the whole process of like what specifically needs to be done. So that is how you eliminate vague goals. Now, we need to talk about how we learn vocabulary. I would say the biggest mistake that I made as an unseasoned language learner would be trying to sponge in all the vocabulary that I possibly could. Every unknown word I encountered, I was jotting it down only to forget it shortly thereafter because why? It wasn't relevant in my life, okay? My biggest vocabulary recommendation is that once you get a good grasp on the foundations of the language, Learn words that come to you naturally and that are relevant for you. For example, if you're reading a news article that uses a lot of legal vocabulary, you don't need to learn all this legal vocabulary unless you're a lawyer, then it would be relevant for you. Let's say you're a huge baseball fan who happens to be learning Spanish. That is great because you know who loves baseball? Cubans, Dominicans. That could bring you a lot of joy to be able to talk about something that you really care about in your target language. This is called vocab selection. So when you're reading a text or when you're listening to a podcast, just whatever comes to you and you think, hey, I can picture myself using this word, then you jot it down. You don't need to jot down every single word. It's just like when you shop for clothes, you know, instead of focusing on, you know, singular flashy pieces that you might not really be able to wear that much, focus more on like the neutral basics that you can use in a lot of events and a lot of situations. So before you jot down a word, I want you to ask yourself, you know, when do I imagine myself using this word? In what kind of situation? How often? Do I really need this word? You know, and it's the same thing. Like when you're going to buy the pink off the shoulder you know, blouse with the fur trim or whatever. Think, like, realistically, how much am I gonna wear this? How much am I gonna use this? And watch your life change. Watch your life simplify itself by 100. And speaking of vocabulary, I cannot miss an opportunity to mention a really good tool for learning vocabulary naturally, which is, my friends, LangoPie. LangoPie is a language learning platform that uses original foreign TV shows and movies to teach nine different languages. That's English, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, French, Italian, German, Russian, Japanese, and Korean. Is that nine? That's nine. With LangoPie, you have access to literally thousands of hours of, you know, foreign language movies, series, documentaries. So if you're tired of looking for new foreign language stuff to watch on Netflix, give LingoPi a try. And it's not just the content, it's also the learning tools that LingoPi offers. So first of all, they have completely customizable subtitles. So you can watch just in your target language, just in your native language. You can watch with both subtitles at the same time, or you can do what they call mashup, where it's kind of like mixed. I personally find myself using the double subtitle feature most of the time, just cause I like to like notice the differences between my target language and my native language. But you know, all the different options have different benefits. It is also very easy to learn vocab efficiently through LingoPi because if you just click on a word that you don't know, it simultaneously gives you the definition and automatically saves a flashcard like for you in the collection for that movie, series, whatever you're watching. And you can review the flashcards after you're done watching, but the platform automatically generates a pop quiz while you're watching every time you save five words. So that's kind of revolutionary, right? Because we always like focus on practicing vocab after we're done, you know, with the source content, but I find it so interesting to like test right after you've learned it. In my vocabulary video that I did a few months back, I actually mentioned that, you know, that's a really important point to practice words like as soon as you can after you learn them. So the pop quiz function is a really, really good example of that. And today is your lucky day, my friend, because LingoPie is offering a free seven day trial. All you have to do is click the link down in the description. Think of all the stuff that you could learn in seven days. Research has actually proven that you can learn about 15 new words a day effectively. So theoretically, a week from now, you could know 105 more words in your target language than you do right now. That sounds pretty good to me. I don't know about you. So if it floats your boat, click the link down below in the description to try LingoPie out for free. Next up, another big mistake is misunderstanding the way that you learn best. 
this is something that people tend to slip into like entirely innocuously, especially like first time language learners that have never learned a foreign language before. And that's okay because you just haven't learned how you learn best yet. But that's for you to figure out, okay? So for example, if you're a visual learner, you're probably gonna benefit a lot more from watching a TV show than just listening to a podcast because there's also like a visual aid. You know, you're gonna be able to keep up visually with what people are talking about, what people are doing, and that, you know, all in all is just a better experience for you. Another example, if you have a short attention span, don't force yourself to sit down and do flashcards for an entire hour straight. You know, even if you want to study that much, you should just break it up into smaller chunks. Nobody can optimize your language learning for you. You know, it's up to you to know how you learn best and, you know, independently of what other people do, independently of what, you know, a random YouTube polyglot may say, just being honest. Cause I'm not a god, the fuck? And the only way to do this effectively is through trial and error, which we did establish at the beginning of this video, error is completely fine and actually encouraged in language learning. So ask yourself, like back in school, what classes did you really enjoy? God, I'm I sound like such a boomer right now saying all this in the past. Maybe you're in high school. I don't know. What classes did or do you enjoy and why? You know, was it the teacher's methods? Was it certain media that you guys use? What made that such a, you know, beneficial learning experience for you? And you can apply that into your individual learning experiences, you know? You can, you know, follow that. Follow a model of what you know that you already enjoy. But also be very wary not to like box yourself in only doing things that you know you'll like. Because another part of being a seasoned, you know, independent language learner is stepping out of your comfort zone, doing things, you know, outside of the box sometimes. Okay, the number one mistake that you can make in language learning, in my humble opinion, is... Y'all ready? Translating in your head or subconsciously always trying to find equivalents in another language. You have got to learn to think in your target language, okay? Because out in the real world, it is not practical to expect, you know, whoever you're talking to, to wait while you translate in your head what they've just said to you. I should, you know, make a whole separate video on this individually, but basically just stop translating from your target language into your native language and vice versa, okay? Stop it. Let it go. It's getting embarrassing. Learn to appreciate, you know, a language's ways of expression for what they are because my friend if you think ni modo in spanish is gonna mean no way in english you're sadly mistaken on another note you know like the nuances of language and the things that get lost in translation those are such great clues into other cultures and the other worlds in which these languages live so you're doing yourself a big disservice if you downplay that if you ignore that and don't get me wrong, okay, I still have this problem in some of my languages. It's kind of like an eternal battle, you know, depending on how your brain is wired. But the key is to look at a language idiomatically and not, you know, literally, because language is not 2D, it's 3D. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. Those are, I guess, like my biggest fumbles in my language learning journey. So if any of you guys have also had those, it would be a great comfort to me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Did you learn something? Did you have a good time? That's what's important. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to get really crazy, consider hitting the bell notification button to get a notification every single time I post. Um, but stay healthy. I will give you guys some updates soon on why I'm in Mexico, because that's kind of random, right? And take care. See you soon. Bye.